<clears throat> I'm going to do something very quick. Um, no, I'm not going to give you my whole sermon, so we're not going to be here till 3 o'clock this afternoon. Terry's like, hey, amen over here. Um, but I do want to share with you, I do want to close this up real quick with you real quick. Um, I know I said quick twice, but I just want to talk to you, just go through it real quick, because I wanted to finish up in Haggai today, and I still feel that the Lord wants me to do that. So what I'm going to do real quick, uh, most of this sermon is just gone right out the window, I'm not even going to do it. But what I want to do is I want to give you a word of encouragement. And I was just sitting here thinking this morning, I've told somebody, I told my wife this morning, it didn't even hit me until this morning. God always works it out for her. The whole book of Haggai, I've been talking about getting to work, building his kingdom, building his church for his glory. Amen? What's the mark? It just hit me this morning that he wanted me to finish this up and get to this. So I want to, real quick, what I want to do is I want to kind of give you the main points of where I've gone so far. I'm going to read our scripture. And then I want to give you a word of encouragement this morning. As we continue, we walk right on out those doors and we continue to do the work of the Lord in and outside the walls of the church today. So, I'm not even going to put it up on the screen or anything, but I'll be in Haggai chapter 2, verse 20 through 23. And so let me just real quick give you the main points that I have covered so far in the first one and a half chapters of Haggai. Number one, as we get to work doing the work of the Lord, building His church and His kingdom, our focus and our priority must be what? The glory of God. Jesus died on the cross. Yeah, he, he died for, the sin, for our sins and the forgiveness of sins. But what was on Jesus' mind when he was dying on the cross? It was the glory of God the Father. And he's doing that through our salvation. If our focus and our priority is not the glory of God, nothing else we do will matter. They got back to working. Churches today, they get to working, they start working, and all of a sudden it just falls apart. They got back to work in less than a month, the work stopped. All because they were two and two things. Number one, in chapter two, they were too busy looking around at the glory of the other nations, of how good things were going with the Persian Empire and these other nations, and they compared what they were doing to their glory. And then number two, they were looking backwards. So they were looking around and they were looking backwards at the glory that they used to have in Solomon's the first temple. And they said, it'll never be that way again. And see, the answer is not looking backwards as we build his kingdom. The answer is not looking around as we build his kingdom. The answer is looking to Jesus Christ and following Jesus Christ as he moves forward. And then last week I said this. As we focus and prioritize His work and, and we move forward following Him, we all must always remember three things. Number one, we saw it last week. Just because we're doing the work of the Lord, just because we're around the people of God, just because we're in the close proximity of the things of God, does not make us holy and righteous. Only the blood of Jesus Christ makes us holy and righteous. And what that means is very simple. As we go to work, getting busy, building His church, His kingdom, it means that my life is totally dependent on the death of Jesus Christ. Number two, we must also remember that all spiritual progress is totally dependent on the Lord's strength. Listen to me. It's not about your talent. It's not about your ability. You want to know what it's about? It's about your availability to Jesus Christ. Are you available to Jesus Christ and His work? He will strengthen. He will provide. We are totally dependent on His strength. <clears throat> and number three that I said last week, as we get to work building His church, building His kingdom, the promise that God gave us is very simple. The harvest is out there. The harvest is coming. So we keep on working. And we never, may never see on this side of eternity the harvest. But when we stand in heaven for all of eternity, around people from all nations, tribes, and tongues, shouting, salvation belongs to the Lord and to the Lamb that sits on the throne. We will see our part 
building his kingdom. The harvest is out there. The Lord promises the harvest and it will come. And then what I want to do real quick, I want to read to you my scripture from today. And I'm going to give you the three encouragements as we walk out the door. Actually, before we go into a business meeting, then we'll walk out the door building his kingdom and building his church. In Haggai chapter 2, beginning in verse 20, it says, And again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the 24th day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the, overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the street of the Gentile nations. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will, sh I will take you, Zerubbabel, listen to this title, my servant, it's a messianic title. We know this is a prophetic word about the future. My servant, the son of Shiatiel, says the Lord, and will make you like a signet ring. And here I love this verse, listen to this. For I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. So what I want to do real quick is I want to give you three quick encouragements. I want to take just a minute. As we build his kingdom, as we build his church, the greatest thing that hinders us in building his kingdom and his church, you know what it is? It's fear. I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I can't do it. I can't get up in front of people and speak. The list goes on and on. Excuse me. Fear is the greatest thing. But here at the end, the Lord gives three words of encouragement to Zerubbabel, to the people, to us, as we go out and we build his kingdom, we build his church. Number one is this. I will shake the heavens and the earth. I've already said a couple weeks ago, very simple. When you're doing the work of the Lord, it's going to stand for all of eternity. Anything else, if your focus and priority is not on his glory, when he returns, it won't stand. But listen, if we're doing the work of the Lord, whatever we do, if the world hates us, if they mock us, whatever they may say, whatever work we're doing for his glory, it will stand when he takes the heavenly earth. So don't let fear creep in. Keep working. Because your work for the Lord will stand. <clears throat> Number two, then in verse 22, he says, I'll overthrow and I will destroy. I will overthrow the chariots. You ever feel like some days? It, it, tell me, has anybody ever made this statement before? Ooh, one day they're going to get what they deserve. Anybody ever made that statement? Oh, come on. Some of those of you that don't have your hands up, you're lying right now. <laughs> Hey, when Jesus Christ returns, he's going to make all things right. Your work is going to stand. And those that try to frustrate and hinder the glory of God through our work, he's going to do it. He's going to get it back. He's going to judge them. He's going to take care of them. So let that be encouragement number two. Number one, your work will remain for all eternity. Encouragement number two, he will judge and he will take care of those things and he will make them right. And then number three, I don't have enough time to do enough in this verse right here. But let me tell you, there's so much going on here in verse 23. In that day, prophetic day in the future, when Jesus Christ returns, in that day, he's going to take Zerubbabel, my servant, my servant is a messianic title. Isaiah 52 and Isaiah 53, talking about the Messiah, the Christ to come. Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel. And everybody's going, what in the world's going on with Shealtiel here? You go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Shealtiel, you find out Josiah had a son. Last, one of the last kings of Judah had a son named uh, Jeconiah. Before they were sent into exile in the Babylon. And then in Babylon, Jack and I had a son. You know what his name was? Shiatiel. Shiatiel had a son. You know what his name was? Zerubbabel. You see, 
when they were exiled into Babylon. The line of David, it was interrupted. Here, the Lord says, keep building my house. Keep building my church. Keep doing the work of the Lord. I will take care of those that hinder and frustrate you. Your work's going to stand for all of eternity. Oh, and by the way, I am faithful. I am true. You can take me at my word. You can take me at my promises. The line of David, he is going to come. My servant is going to come. And he's going to come like a signet ring with authority and power. I don't know about you, but knowing that the lies of Jesus Christ, Zerubbabel, is going to continue through me, that's going to make me want to get to work. Amen? What a word of encouragement here. Listen to me. The work you're doing is not pointless and useless in building his church, his kingdom. Keep on working. And those, in verse 22, that try to frustrate and hinder his work through you, he's going to deal with them when he returns to shake the heavens and the earth. And then, this Jesus Christ, he's coming. He says, through the line, he's still coming. The promised seed of Abraham, the son of David, He's coming for us. He's coming again. And what a day that will be. When you get to see what part you took in building God's house. And my main question today as I close it up here right now is very simple. I've already said it this morning. The biggest problem within any church, I don't care what church it is, Mount Hebron, East Taylorsville, the Reforms, the Little River, I don't care what church it is in this world. The biggest problem among the people of God is this. They are more concerned about their abilities and their talents when it comes to being, uh, building the house of God than their availability. I will shake the heavens. Your work will stand. I will judge those that try to frustrate and hinder my work through you. And by the way, the line of David is still intact and Jesus Christ is going to return and sit on the throne of David for all of eternity. So get to work building my house, building my church, building my kingdom. And the question I want to leave with you today is that quick summary. Somebody please mark this day down because it's the shortest sermon I've ever had. Amen. My question this morning is very simple. I don't care about your ability or your talents. And neither does Jesus Christ. He is more concerned about your availability. Are you available to Jesus Christ? So that through you, he can build his church. He can build his kingdom for his glory and his name. As we sing a song right here, real quick. I don't know what it is. No, we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, three girls to uh, do an instrumental. Amen. Let the spirit lead us. Let the spirit lead us. We're gonna have an instrumental. I'm gonna ask you to stand. I'm gonna ask a question to you this morning as we close up. Are you available for Jesus Christ to work in and through you for His glory, building His kingdom and His church? Have you made yourself available? I ask you today. Come up here as a church. Let's make us, as a body of Christ today, available to Him and His work.